Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we are going to be listening to Camelot for the very first time on this channel. They are an American metal band formed by Thomas Youngblood, I think based out of Florida, but they have a very wide international set of band members. So I'm excited to get to hear them. And we're going to start with the Elizabeth trilogy. I know, very suitable. Elizabeth 1, 2, and 3, we are going to be listening to all of them today. And they're about a Hungarian noblewoman, Elizabeth Bathory, who is known for uh, widespread murder. She tried to obtain, I believe, eternal life by bathing in the blood of virgins. So uh, she was she was a little wacko, but they made songs about her. So it's going to be really fun to listen to. Let's get to it. From our album, Karma. This song is about vanity, it's about beauty, it's about growing old, it's about evil. This song is called Elizabeth. Can I just say it's really weird to hear your name spoken with so much emotional download of information behind it. Ah, uh, okay. Creepy. My name is Creepy. He looks like he's getting ready to sing, but I just want to say a couple quick words. Uh, I understand that one of the members of the band is married to now to Simone Simons, uh, the lead singer from Epica. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful and awesome. Um, and I, I know that they're featuring some guest vocalists on this too, um, just from doing a little research on it ahead of time. Uh, but I don't remember the names right now because everybody is pretty new in this band to me. But Roy is our lead singer. And this first part of the Elizabeth trilogy is called Mirror Mirror, which makes sense because you see a woman looking at herself in the mirror in it. Mirror, can you tell me how to stay forever young? Let me know the secret, I will hold my twisted tongue. Please protect my beauty, velvet skin so pure and white. Hear my name resounding like a hymn at dead of night. Whoa, he's got a he has got a lot of emotion in the voice, a ton of longing. It sounds like a lot of pain in it as well. Interesting that uh Sometimes he chose, there was one moment when he chose to flip into a falsetto, into that upper register that doesn't have a lot of weight and it made it uh, actually feel like a release of energy to me, which is exactly what's happening at the laryngeal level. But it was beautiful how he connected that to an emotional element. I loved that. Uh, let's go back a little bit. A really interesting use of vibrato, a little bit of a, like a little bit of vocal fry here and there. Uh, already very intrigued. Can you tell me how to stay forever young? Let me know the secret. I will hold my twisted tongue. <sighs> I love the way that he sang tongue there. Gave just a little bit of vibrato to make that vulnerability um, very clear. 
um, loving, he's singing on the edge of the chords right now as if it's almost hard to get this out. Um, there's so much angst behind it that it sounds like it's difficult to express sometimes. Um, but I like, it's a really, really powerful emotion that immediately grasps me. I'm also noticing he doesn't necessarily always sing perfectly on the pitch, but he chooses when to maybe slide or go a little bit, uh, to pick somewhere else. It's not exactly in the center of the pitch. This, uh, it's not because he's got difficulties matching pitch, but it's because he's being very, very expressive and intentional about these decisions, as far as I can tell. Please protect my beauty, velvet skin so pure and white. White, Hear that false set of moment, beautiful. Sounded like a hymn, dead of night. That is one of the most beautiful falsettos I've ever heard in a rock metal context. It's um, super haunting. Uh, it has a lot of um, uh, a lot of texture to it. It's not just like pure. I love pure and, and like uh, very ethereal falsettos. This one sounds like it has uh, more more life lived. More. Um, a weathered feeling to it almost and it absolutely gave me goosebumps gorgeous <laughs> great tuning is amazing this is there's like every single moment that he's singing is just dripping with expression um he reminds me a little bit of dio to be honest uh, the way that he's so involved in it with his body um uh, it's it that also reminds me a lot of opera singers the way that every single pitch you sing is meant to be invested in some way with emotion uh, and needs to have this continuous energy coming out. It's just, it's an incredible formation of the stream of vocal energy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to that again. It like every, it's even hard to get a big picture of it because every single moment has this incredible new place. Ah, you know, he reminds me a little bit of Haley, uh, Haley Reinhardt too, the way he's oh, playing with the placement in it. It's just, it's really good. And that falsetto, wow. You know, falsetto often is sung, uh, any sort of riffing or playing with different sounds in falsetto often is done on an ooh vowel. Ooh vowels are typically easier to sing in falsetto. He's going to an ah, like an ah, uh, ah, kind of in that area and playing between those two vowels a little bit as well. And there are times when he goes really bright with it. Uh, and I think that's part of what the the way that he's playing with some different placement in the falsetto is partly what makes it so attractive and special to me. Oh, let's go back and listen to that just a little more. Sorry. Ooh, it's gonna be a long video. Wow. Once I struck a servant, she's a virgin, free from sin. Drops of blood caress me and refer my aging skin. You can just tell from the way he'll have suddenly a little bit of extra air in the sound 
or the way that the sound um, seems to have like uh, like more condensed or dominus to it. There are times when he goes out with the sound and has more like ha, ah, and times when it's ooh, like more, um, it feels like it's more contained within a column. And he'll do that within the same phrase just to express it. It's this combination of like, it feels like intense desire and longing and wanting like almost fear to express that desire and longing. And then also wanting to express it at the same time. Uh, I'm, I'm loving it so much. Like sin. I love the way he half spoke that it was on pitch for a bit, but then dropped it off. It was more spoken and had that area context to it. And refined my ancient skin, refined, that went into that column I was talking about. Like it was more of an inner experience rather than the one that he was putting out. Ah, oh, it's amazing. Could this be the answer? Uncorrupted, calm and red. Wow. Voices keep resounding. My days bewildered head. I was not expecting him to suddenly break out such a clean sound. Uh, that makes the beginning and everything I said about his voice infinitely more impressive. This, this is his fundamental sound that he's singing right now. This is a clean sound. It is medium to medium loud in production. Just really good... Um, coming together the chords it sounds very free here whereas the sound before had a lot more um definitely had more tension to produce it not not in a bad way uh sustaining that kind of sound for a long time probably would have taken um uh, more more endurance it would have been more trying more difficult this free sound that he just had um that would be a lot easier because the efficiency of the vocal cords is better and there's less muscular strain. But the sound at the beginning had all of that incredible packing of expression. Uh, I thought that he was going to open up into a sound that had maybe more grit. This clean, beautiful sound, this is, uh, this is something, again, that opera singers strive after. It's gorgeous. Wow, okay. Uncorrupted, calm and red. I love the way he sings that. <laughs> Could this be the answer? Uncorrupted, carmine red. The way he sings carmine red, it's like, I can barely contain myself, the carmine red. Oh boy, it really seems like a, a serial killer. Wow, that uh, that was beautifully and feel very accurately expressed, it seems like. Whew. Voices keep resounding My days bewildered head His uh, blend of registers is also gorgeous. Again, wow, I, I bet he has some sort of classical background because this is, uh, it's very clear that uh, he, he is, he's got great technique. I don't know if that's totally natural. I think it probably had a little bit of classical education in there somewhere. Um, so his registers, meaning that his chest voice is lower voice up to his head voice. I'm using classical terminology here, by the way. Some people will refer to it as mixed before going over that big break into falsetto. So his head voice and chest voice, he's saying in both throughout here. 
Um, but it's so um, it's so blended together. You don't really hear that break. It sounds like one person just very fluidly through the whole time. In order to do that, a singer has to make a ton of tiny adjustments. Um, some it's like each note wants like a percentage of CT and TA muscles. CT being cricothyroid, TA being thyroid the various percentage of activation of these two main muscle groups determines if you're in head or chest voice. And so um, at that percentage often is changing as you go up and down. And as that's changing, you don't hear any evidence of the change in his voice. It's something um, that that a lot of singers strive for. It's generally considered a very good thing to strive for. And it's beautiful how seamless his voice is. That would hurt my knees, man. Ow. Oh, that was a creepy sound. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, I The build at the end I thought was going to uh, not have a chop off, which the chop off sounded like killing someone, if I'm going to be honest. But maybe that's just because I'm in this mindset of, um, of what we're, yeah, of Elizabeth Bathory. And uh, I wasn't expecting the chop off. I was actually expecting a transition into the next part. I believe that that was the end of part one, Mirror, Mirror. And I think we're going into part two, which is Requiem, Requiem of the Innocent. Uh, but that I was really, really digging this. They added some more modern elements here, uh, electric elements for sure, um, to make this almost distorted build to a chop. The, man, that, the creepy voices there are super spooky. Hmm, cool. I think this is part two. I might be wrong though. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, very, very interesting. I'm thinking back to now um, how Roy um, ended up on the ground with his knees in this position that just looks really, really painful to me. <laughs> uh, I wonder if he was um, being the innocent person that was killed. I'm not sure. Um, uh, but it seems like this woman now is playing Elizabeth Bathory. And uh, yeah, very, very curious. Also, what was this? He had a, uh, um, a harsh vocal at the beginning. So I'm wondering if we're going to get a little bit more harsh vocals. Almost seems like he's been raised from the dead. Yeah, interesting. I wish I could hear her a little more clear, uh, clearly. I do... I think that's very much on purpose. They have a, a lot more verbs, so she's a little more haunting in, in elements. But... I wish I could hear her voice more clearly. It sounds like she's kind of going between a few different vowels there to create this uh, haunting line. Father, can you hold me one more time again? Whisper, I shall love you in my ear. Mother, did you lie? Would you 
Very, very satisfying. Um, I love the the tortured emotion that I'm sensing from his vocal parts. I also love the instrumental here. It's doing these like chromatic passages, and it it you feel it lead into a half step above, then go down a whole step, then return to the original pitch, um, and it feels so painful in the instrumental. Almost, I wonder if the guys are even maybe sometimes pushing it a little bit sharp or flat on those chromatics just to inch out a little bit more pain. I uh, really love that. It And then this combination of mother, mother, can you hold me one more time again? Would you tell me why there's something deeper that I fear? Wow, it sounds like she killed a child. Oh, these lyrics are dark. Something deeper that I fear. Uh, digging, there was a, there was like an echo or delay, a very, very late one that was put on his voice. You almost heard it repeat again in the background. That's such a cool effect to have here. Love that. There it is. Did he say, don't you want to die? Well, I'm going to scroll the lyrics there and just... Um, very, uh, I like the way that he's often pushing into his voice so it breaks a little bit, does a little cry sometimes. That adds another emotional layer to it. Um, very, yeah, he said, don't you want to die? What a powerful lyric. Whoa, whoa, drench me with your innocence tonight. Oh my gosh, these these lyrics are... Uh, obviously, they're about uh, a woman who was a serial killer of innocents and other women. Um, but I also wonder if they had like some other thing that they were extrapolating this, some uh, metaphysical thing or that they were applying this to. I feel like Drench Me With Your Innocence Tonight it could take on different contexts or Don't You Want to Die? Like you could be talking to a past self or, or there's all kinds of different ways you could take this and um, put it on top of a different situation. Um, but overall, the story, the vivid story that it paints doesn't actually need to be interpreted in any other way. It's incredible. Daggers in the darkness find your way when the moon is full and piercing bright. Drench me with your innocence tonight. Whoa. Oh, fantasy abound. Um, this is this is really cool, guys. Ooh. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've ever seen a keyboardist headbang at the same time. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is not great uh, posture at the keyboard. When you go forward and your hands are here, it creates more than a 90 degree angle. You can every now and then use your body to lean into the keys to get like a really big resounding boom sound on a piano, but uh, head banging repetitively is uh, not not normally recommended, but it looks cool. And this is uh, on a keyboard um, instead of like a grand piano or something. So I think the sound isn't gonna be as affected by that. And uh, and I'm sure he's figured out how to play at the same time, just like guitarists do. I just don't know how anybody sees past the massive amount of hair because when it flicks in your eyes, it's really, really painful. I might have tried headbanging recently, just just so you know, just to try and understand. And I, I no, it's still painful to me. Anyhow, let's go back and appreciate his headbanging keyboard moment. <laughs> wow. I 
love the way that Roy is so engaged with the audience and active. He was lying on the stage. I've seen him a few different times with his feet up on the speakers. Uh, I've mentioned this before in videos, but having that foot up, um, one leg up on a speaker can actually help essentially position the pelvis a little bit more underneath you. It's very good for additional breath support. It can help round the breath support very nicely. I don't know if that's why he's using it, but it is an additional bonus. Uh, very interesting to see him on his knees by those monitors as well. So very active singer, reminding me a little bit of Bruce Dickinson. these sweeping lines in here so much that it, it feels like it's got so much beautiful melody going on. I love that. Um, really, really digging this genre and, and the way the band is doing it. Um, yeah, the, the way that there's so much, it feels like harshness in the instruments um, or blasts of energy, especially from the percussion. But then the expression and legato or just sustained vocal line paired with that to me is really beautiful. And, uh, and all of these instrumentalist musicians sound very virtuosic in nature. Uh, love, love, love what's going on here. I liked that piano interlude there quite a bit. Um, it almost sounded a little bit Mozartian at first, and then it almost uh, evolved into something you would hear from, uh, is it, like in the theory of everything, from like m maybe more of a minimalist approach or a romantic approach, um, like Johannes Johannesson, I think is his name. Uh, I was really digging the way that they also brought some strings in there. It definitely has a classical feel, uh, beautiful blending of these genres. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, I think we're I think we're going into part three now. like he went out into the crowd there. Am I wrong? Is this like a thrust stage? I was hoping I'd see it a little bit more. Yeah, he steps down. Whoa. A nice harsh vocal too. Nice riling up of the audience. <laughs> he 
he sounds possessed. That's what... <laughs> Uh, the way he's pulling these harsh vocals, uh, mostly in the bottom range is what it sounds like. He'll add some and kind of go in and out of singing with the harsh vocals. Uh, really good tuning. He had some descending chromatic moments, which are some of the hardest things to tune out there. And he tuned those very nicely. I'm going to go back a ways. I'm hoping I can get around the start of this third movement again. Um, maybe here. Let's uh, back a little bit more. Whoa. Uh, um, so it, it, that's... <laughs> it's hard to speak. The amount of different kinds of timbres he's going through is shocking to me. Very, very shocking. And especially because he continues to return to such a beautifully well-balanced tone. Uh, this paragraph that he just sang or stanza, cold and twisted, they resisted. What was I to do? All I ever wanted was a fraction of the truth. He achieves evil so well. So well, he should he should be a Disney villain, 100% for sure. Any sort of animated villainous character, you have to be really overboard and how evil or how good you sound or whatever the various emotion or character you're playing when it's animated, you need to go above and beyond. This is above and beyond and like twists my stomach. I love it. That, that section right there, I love that we had a really consistent, steady sound the whole way through. Again, feels almost classical in production. Uh, there's a, like an apoggio. It sounds like he's continuously seeing this sustained line. The consonants are just dropped on top, but he's really going through the vowels so that the sound is more continuously being delivered, essentially. And it makes it so the sound doesn't ever feel like it comes in or out, and it just feels um, always present. And the tone quality as well is always present and consistent. It's really beautiful. Wait, I need to go back and catch that again. He almost sounds like a distorted guitar right now, the way he's like, Argh. he's, it must be constraining so much to get that extra distortion in there. Um, and you can even see in his face the way he's going super lateral with that. These sounds are incredible. Um, like doing this. What a cool sound. So taking all of that extra tension and making all these deeper sounds that often can put a lot of weight into a voice that's harder to heft up. But he, when he goes up to his higher notes, he's not taking all that weight and going like, hoo -hoo, right? It, it doesn't get caught in his throat. He goes up, he transitions, he slenders it out and finds this beautiful round tone at the same time. It's uh, just great, great technique.
love a love a shift to falsetto there again. Uh, interesting to note that a lot of people think when you just sing um, a series of notes that they think it's mostly on a ah or o. Oh. If you listen closely, it sounds like he starts on like an l and drops down more into a pure o vowel um, towards the end. Um, that can help with the onset, maybe it's easier to onset, meaning start the vocalization on an E eh or an A ah vowel, you do then an O. Or maybe it just sounds better in his voice. Certain vowels sound better and more consistent too to help bridge that uh, difference between registers that might be going on there. Um, so I don't know what his preferred vowel is. People can definitely have favorite vowels in different areas of registration, but it's interesting to hear the vowel choices and just make note of them. I'll go back so you can listen to that again. Definitely ends on O. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I said something about that because it's really interesting to hear the audience sing because I think most people there thought it was an O vowel the whole time, but it sounded like a couple people caught on to the, the difference in vowels. <laughs> So funny. I every time he does a harsh vocal, I'm used to hearing harsh vocals, but something about him doing a harsh vocal catches me off guard. I think it's like the beautiful, it really sounds very classical to me. And so I don't expect that kind of voice to suddenly have a harsh moment. And it, it does. It's it's like, ooh, cool. <laughs> Knees. Oh. <laughs> That's right, appreciate your audience. Whoa. I don't know if you guys caught that, but uh, that twisting motion of the camera is not something that I dig. I'll just put that out there. Uh, I'm a little prone to getting motion sickness in various situations when cameras twist around. Like, uh, I think it was the first season of The Expanse. It was a little bit difficult for me to stomach and get used to, but then I loved it. So anyhow, uh, uh, there was a moment there. I was like, oh, goodness, the world is topsy-turvy. But... The music in this and the performance was just incredible. I'm really impressed and surprised by the huge range of expression. Uh, that was super cool. I'm very impressed also, by the way, with the keyboardist. His head banging and playing at the same time skills are more than I can comprehend. I've been playing piano my entire life. So that's very surprising and very, very cool to see. Uh, overall, I really, I want to know more about Roy Khan. I want to know where was he trained and what way was he trained for sure. I would like to know more about what, um, like where he gets some of the inspiration from different sounds from. Is that something that he just experiments with in the shower? Because the, the huge range that he has, not just vocal range, meaning lows and highs, but the range of expression that he shows is off the charts. And uh, not, not what I was expecting for sure. I loved, I loved that he began with that tortured sound 
Because when he got to the clean sound, it was so surprising and beautiful. Uh, very, very special vocalist. Would love to hear more of him and more of Camelot. So please make recommendations for what you would like to see on the channel down in those comments below. That's where we check for them and track them. And also you can come and say hello to me any Monday, Tuesday, or Friday at 8 a.m. That's when we premiere videos here live on YouTube. And I love getting to chat with you guys and know you better. So come say hello. And also you can find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.